Hey, hey, hey! It's the first ever real estate marathon. I'm your host, Jazz Takar. My next guest, he is the president and co-founder of one of Canada's fastest growing companies. He coaches over a hundred thousand investors. His portfolio consists of hundreds, if not thousands now, and he'll share that with us, of doors. He is a very, very sought after speaker, an author, a serial entrepreneur slash mad scientist when it comes to a whiteboard. I'm pretty good with whiteboards, but this gentleman's like amazing. I've seen him. I have seen him in action. I've got to share the stage with him plenty of times. He's one of the, the best real estate coaches I've ever come across. We are in such, we are in for such a massive treat. There he is, Mr. Michael Saracini. How you doing today? <laughs> awesome, man. Well done. Congrats for, uh, congratulations to you, the REC team. You guys have done an amazing job. Look at this. You're live streaming. You are in the room bringing people from around the country. Well done, man. This looks great. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Michael. I mean, like, like, I just, I love seeing your face all the time. I love seeing your smile. Um, we have a lot of, sh a lot of people on right now. And I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, the biggest response we got from all the promotion and all the digital stuff we were doing, they're like, um, this is great, but when is Michael Saracini gonna be speaking? What time <laughs> is he coming on? And so that's why I'm seeing the numbers jump right on my screen right now. It's going crazy. Michael, thank you so much. We're going to be speaking about the top trends during COVID, the top five trends during COVID that you've seen, because you coach over hundreds of thousands of investors, man. Like you're bringing a lot, like a huge wealth of knowledge. And so for everybody who's watching or listening, guys, like this is the time I need you to take some notes because we only got 18 minutes and 42 seconds left with Michael, and you've been so gracious with your time. I know you generally never speak during August. I sent you a text. You're like, Jazz, if it's for you and REC, I got your back. Don't worry. So I'm going to try to take a little bit of a backseat right now, Michael, because you're not, a sh you're not shy to the camera or these type of virtual conferences. You do them all the time. Go at it, my man. What's the top five uh, COVID trends you've been noticing? Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jazz. I'm going to try to move quick. Um, I am going to, I'm bringing you information, not only from me and really not from me, from my coaching team. I have an amazing coaching team. And like you said, we coach thousands of people through our coaching programs and hundreds of thousands through all of our stuff. So what I've done, I meet with the coaching team once a month and I get all of the goods, what's happening on the street right now. And so I'm bringing you the executive summary of what's happening on the street over a thousand hours worth of coaching has gone into what I'm about to give you. And, you know, it's really amazing when you have a coaching team like mine that works with so many different people, the amount that they learn in one day is more than I can learn in a whole year. If I was doing this 24 hours a day, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get this much contact in, you know, in, in a month, what they do in a year. It's amazing how much value there, but I want to address something. You said mad scientist, I think, and look at my hair is kind of, kind of getting there. Guys. <laughs> I didn't even know, Michael, I haven't seen your face for a while, so I didn't know you had the hair like a mad scientist. Too. I know, you didn't even know, and there it is. I'm getting I'm getting in my older age. I think I'm getting a little more mad. Well, I'm sorry, buddy, someone oh. just commented right now. They said, oh, my God, Michael, you're looking younger. <laughs> Amazing. I should keep this hair. I think, uh, you know, my, I, I don't think my wife likes it, so it means I'm not. I was, was going to ask you, what does the boss think, the real yeah. boss? What does she yeah, think, I think about she it? Likes it? So She doesn't like it, so I don't like it. So <laughs> we're going to cut it. But uh, yeah, today I'm on vacation with my family, so I, I wanted to still come in. I'm at we're at the cottage here, which is really cool, and kids are just taking a little chill out time. We're gonna go hit the beach, and today's actually it's my wedding anniversary. I know it's oh so my god, we had, a, we had his birthday. Well, we had two birthdays. We have Chris's birthday. We have my mom's birthday. Happy oh anniversary! Let's see this come through the the chat group or the what is this called, Bobby? The panel here, bring there, they're coming in. Happy anniversary! What can I ask? How many years, my man? You no, know, because I, honey, how many? No, I'm kidding. No, we're uh, eight years. Eight years. Happy eight year anniversary, buddy. <laughs> so, really cool. Yeah. So, okay, let's get to the good. So, yeah. my coaching team, I've got stories from the street as well, because this is not just, you know, me reading some articles or doing a couple things and, and writing some things down. This is the information that 
over a thousand other investors out there are funneling to our coaching team and then funneling to me. So you can kind of see me as like, as, as like the, the, the focal point of yeah. all of this information. So here we go. The top five trends. I also brought a special gift for your audience today, Jazz. So I want to make sure we get to that. I have a special free gift to give everybody uh, because I, I just love what you guys do. And I always like to give free gifts when I, when I do stuff. So here we go. Number one, um, motivated sellers. Right now, we are on the cusp of a massive redistribution of wealth, one that hasn't happened for the last since uh, the 2008 financial crisis. There was a lot of people that lost money in, in that time, and, but there was a lot of people that became overnight or, or quick millionaires, six months to one year. Like This is impossible to be you know make that much wealth in one year. Real estate is a long-term game, but we're at a transitional point right now. And one of the most powerful things that we see is motivated sellers. Why? Because there's panic in the market. There's uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, there is opportunity for people that are willing to uh, to learn how to do something and then actually take action. So motivated sellers is number one. And that focus is more around the psychology of real estate. You have amazing people today, Jazz, that are going to talk about the economics of real estate. You have Sasha and Callum and you know all these great people. I want to talk about the psychology. I'm not an economics expert, but I like to learn about psychology. That's why people make the decisions they make. There's a branch of science in psychology called uh, behavioral science. And in particular, I'm interested in behavioral economics, why people make purchasing decisions. And so uh, the psychology right now is one of uncertainty. And that means people sell, they panic. And uh, we're not at the panic point yet. Actually, in some markets we are. Uh, but when you get motivated sellers, you get deals. You get prices, you get, you get things you can buy, properties you can buy for less than what they should be worth, both based on the market value of the property next door, and also based on the four ways to win value, which we, we can get into in a future uh, discussion together. Uh, but uh, so motivated sellers, there's people there that are selling for $20,000, $40,000 less, for $0.90 cents on the dollar. Uh, the market generally is strong, right? You know this. The prices haven't dropped. The inventory is limited, in the, and, and, and so people are still buying. But there are the more- GTA, Michael, we saw a 17% increase yeah. last month from year over year, right? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the economics of it, right? We're seeing yeah. the rise up. But in the economics, entwined in there is the psychology of it. No matter how well the market's doing, there's always there's always people that are uncertain and are going to pull the trigger and sell something. There's always the disasters happening, the bad things happening, the the death, the divorce, the disasters. There's and that fo- forces people to sell even in a good market and just offload their property. There's the good things that happen. There's promotions. There's inheritances. There's uh, people sell businesses and sell properties and have all this money and then they 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 sell. So there's motivated sellers out there right now. And so one of the main sectors that our students are seeing motivated sellers is in the student rental market. because And I'm a big student rental guy. That's how I, I made my mark on this real estate world to start. Uh, but with the universities closed, landlords are panicking and they are selling. And some of them are going months without rent, which is kind of sucks in the months, but it's great for the long term. What's two months in a long term of two or 300 months of your property? And so uh, student landlords now uh, are starting to sell their properties and say, I just can't deal with this. I can't deal with the uncertainty. So you could pick up student rental properties for um, 80, 90 cents on the dollar because because they're selling. Uh, all, uh, the downfall for you is you might go a couple months without rent, right. renting the property, but um, you can weather a couple months to get something for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 less. Or put it this way, if you get something for $40,000 less and you go for, you forego three months of rent at $2,000, what does the math tell you? Right, forty thousand dollars of benefit, six thousand dollars of penalty. You get thirty-four thousand dollars. You're up on the world. So, unfortunately, not everyone just looks at it like that, right, Michael? Like we look at it from such a short-term lens or perspective. Yeah. But when you say forty thousand in my uh, forty thousand in my left pocket and six thousand going out of my right pocket, there's still thirty-four thousand going coming back into the right pocket. That's right. Yeah, you're right? net thirty thousand. Actually, yes. it's funny you mentioned short term. I'm reading this book right now called Drive. By okay. Daniel Pink. Yeah, it's uh, this the the surprising truth about what motivates us. And I think he also the- wrote a book about uh, left brain, right brain as well. I think there was. I think he wrote a. Yeah, yeah. I love this yeah. author. I think that's him. Yeah, and um, 
And I, I like that book as well. This is all about behavioral, the, how your psychology works. I just love these books. But he talks about how people make short-term decisions. And this is the perfect example of most of the, most of the world is making short-term decisions. But people that are educated, like the hundreds and hundreds of you watching, uh, you, you can get around that and say, I'm going to make long-term decisions. I'm going to make decisions now that I can project out 4, 5, 10, 15 years. And so um, motivated sellers are coming up. Uh, what else? Uh, landlords with tenants not paying. So, you know, all of the hoopla, all of the, the, the noise around, you know, tenants not paying their rent and the governments in a lot of provinces saying that you can't get evicted. Well, that's causing uncertainty and that's causing landlords to sell their properties. And when landlords sell their properties and they're motivated, that means you and I, we get deals. We get things for less than what they should be worth. It's a temporary blip. So there's lots of landlords out there um, that are scared of their tenants not paying. There's some landlords or tenants haven't paid. Those are great situations for motivated sellers. Uh, so the way you do this is you have to market. You have to market to people that uh, might be um, in this situation. So if I were to put out marketing for student rentals, I would say, you know, students not coming back to school, we can help. We can buy your property. Or for landlords that their tenants aren't paying. You know, tenants aren't paying their rent, tenants boycotting paying your rent, let us help you and we can buy your property. So your marketing message to, uh, has to be crafted, uh, has to be crafted to the, the what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And Jason has a great uh, story for me. He said his um, students that are in the uh, Waterloo region are telling him that they're finding deals uh, because um, they're finding people that are selling the properties exactly this, this, uh, this situation. Uh, because they're afraid that the, the universities aren't going to open up again and they're never going to be able to rent it. So they're just offloading it. They sell for 10 or 20,000 less. They're fine. And they're fine with it, Jazz, because student rentals okay. have gone up like 10, 15% a year, year over right. year, since I've started in the year 2000, so 20 years. So and they you know, this is, as you mentioned, this is, this is where you made, your, m m made a lot of your wealth, right? Was no. starting out there. So second is vacation rentals. Okay, you guys might be covering this. Vacation rentals are like, I feel like this is obvious because most people aren't traveling. We're not going on flights. Uh, I'm traveling, I'm at a cottage here. So, you know, this, these places are booked up like crazy. Um, vacation rentals the, and the cities that, that house vacation rentals has shot up in value. So it's not just the vacation rental, it's the entire microeconomic ecosystem. It's the, the corner store, it's the wakeboarding shop, it's the restaurants. The whole economy gets driven up right now because people are spending tons of money on places they could drive. So every province, every state that's different, um, but vacation rentals in around where you are, those are mm -hmm. shooting up in value. Um, so the tips with vacation rentals, look for something like a four bedroom, two bath, because you want to be able right. to rent to two families if possible. That gets you parents and kids, parents and kids, or parents, kids, and then two grandparents. That's where people are going to pay top dollar, four bedroom, two baths. And you Actually, can- You're bang you, on with that. I just came from Grand Bend a couple of weeks ago, and it was a four bedroom, two yeah. bath that was rented. Bang yeah. on with that one, Michael. Yeah, these are these are what our students are telling us are giving them maximum results. And again, I could never come up with all of this information with my own experience. It would take me years. This is hundreds, not th thousands of hours of experience distilled into this stuff. Um, and then try to get two bedrooms in each room to maximize your uh, heads and beds. Heads and beds yeah. means how many people you can get sleeping in the cottage uh, or the vacation rental. That's where you're right. going to maximize your dollar. So two beds in each room, whether that's bunk beds or two twin beds, maybe they can be pushed together. Somebody wants to sleep in the same bed. Uh, and Judy has a great story here. Uh, she, Judy, uh, one of our coaches has a vacation cottage rental business. So she has these little resorts that have multiple units, um, like cabins. She said she had over 750 views on her listing in one week. Normally she has wow. about 100 views. Okay. So it's over seven times she could have rented her larger cottages at Sleep 10 50 times this summer, she said, by the amount of demand. Um, and that's a lot more than usual. So what did she do? She's not going out to buy more vacation rentals because the market's gone up 25%. It might not okay. be a good time to buy, but it is a good time to buy in either the local economies or if you have something, see if you can increase the income. So she's added bunkies to her cottage. She added um, six beds in each bunkie. Uh, okay. plus uh, three plus a bathroom. And she sold out for all of 2020 in the first couple of days. She sold out for all of 2021 already. And now she's booking into 2022. When you talk about supply and demand, when you have so much demand for your product that you're booking two, three years in advance, now you're talking about prices going up. And prices for us as business people mean profits. And so 
Do I love what I, I I I love what you just talked about uh, uh, with the last investor because I spoke about it in the intro, which is the what and the why is what's important. The how you just brought up two, three, four examples on how to increase profits even while values are going up. You might not want to buy in, in a, like a certain vacation rental right now, but there's certain there's other things you can do to increase yeah. revenues. You got it. There's, if you can't buy, there's other things to do, but there, yes. there still are places to buy. So I hadn't even thought about this, but Jason said his students are, are showing him how they are looking for properties off the beaten path. So he said there's an incredible, incredible demand for these other areas that you would normally think as vacation areas. And so think about any province. I'm going to talk about Ontario, Northern Ontario, Muskoka area, you know, is what we think about cottage country. But there's so many areas around Ontario and Alberta and Manitoba and B.C., that could be great vacation rentals in this market, not six months ago, but today they're great vacation areas, but people just haven't discovered them yet. So get creative, find areas where people might want to go on vacation because those cities are where people are going to start to go because everything else is freaking sold out and people are going to want to go on vacation locally. They're not flying for years. Guess what? People aren't flying for years other than for business or necessity. Yep. So they're going to be, they're going to be close by. So would you, so would you just say, Michael, like a uh, two hour drive, three hour drive? Is that kind of, like what would what would your suggestion be, right? So I'm here in the GTA. Like what would be uh, uh, an okay t like three hours away? Invest in something that's uh, uh, three hours away, maybe. Yeah, it's a good question. It it depends if you mean three hours from where you live or three yeah, hours. From I apologize. Population. Three hours where you live. Yes. Yeah. I would say um, I don't. I invest where returns are best. So where yes. I live me is irrelevant. I'm more thinking two to three hours from major population centers. Okay. Because the more, more population you have in any business, the more uh, business you're going to have, supply and demand, the more demand you'll have. And so if you live in Ontario and Alberta is a great spot, you invest in Alberta or vice versa, right? And so you want to be where people can drive uh, to within a couple hours. Okay, um, perfect. Yeah, so that that that's a great that's a great little circle you can draw around, draw, uh, draw around population centers. All right, uh, next one. First, I, want, I just want to tell everyone of the free gift I brought, Jazz, if that's okay, before we... Uh, yes, yes, we love free stuff. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so this is for everybody watching. I can only offer for a couple days. Uh, but what we do, we have a we have a, a group called Income Property Labs. It's an, it, it takes this experiment every day that people are running on how to do different things in their income property business, and it distills it into what is working today, just exactly what I'm talking about. Thousands of hours of coaching into the goods, the things, things that actually work. Well, we have a group that meets every single month with our coaches, and our coaches will teach a new lesson and, and, and do Q&A and really help people in a group setting. It's called Income Property Labs, and what I brought is a free 30 days for everybody. It's $47 wow. a month, so it's it's really well-priced. But for uh, your audience today, Jazz, I'm going to give everyone three a full free month, free 30 days uh, uh, to join Income Property Labs and to learn all these things. I can I can only cover so much in 20 minutes, but our coaches right. in our uh, every single month, they have a success tool. They have an executive summary. There's a Facebook group. It's amazing. So um, anybody who's interested, if you go to IncomePropertyLabs.com slash REC, REC, uh, you're going to get the uh, special offer for the next couple of days. You can join for free. Tuesday is our next live lab. We do it once a month. And we're going to be talking about flipping to yourself, which is something that, you know, we talk about a lot, Jazz, how you can uh, improve a property and pull the equity out and almost get 100% return on investment. Love it. I uh, love it. So I love other uh, people's money. I mentioned it earlier. Mostly seamlessness, but I still yeah. generally <laughs> like to go to lenders and get other people's money. Continue, my man. Okay, here we are. So the third one I have is uh, multi-unit properties. And so multi-unit properties in particular right now, I want everyone to think about running them like a business in this COVID world. Uh, and now this is, you should be doing this anyway. Like I teach run your pro income properties like a business all day long. Um, it's really important, but run them like a business from a customer experience perspective. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you go to any location today, what do you have to do? You have to wear a mask if you go inside most places. They have signage everywhere. I see signs on the floor, stand here, stand here, stand here. So put all of that, treat it like a business. Put all of that in your multi-residential units. If you have shared laundry, make sure that you have hand sanitizer, pay for that. Get uh, Go to vistaprint.com or vistaprint.ca and you could get all of the signage. You post them on the wall, the physical distancing. You could put even just if you don't want to spend the money on that, spend the money. But even if you don't spend that money, just put green masking tape two right. meters apart where people stand. Treat it like a business um, and then send out an email to all of your tenants uh, and make sure that they know that you're serious about their safety 
and um, that you've put the proper COVID measures in place. And then when you're repair people, this is important because I had a handyman go the other day. I made sure that they uh, they wore a mask. They brought hand sanitizer, they wore a mask, and I let the tenants know that ahead of time. My property manager let the tenants know that so that everybody feels safe. I tell you, Jazz, this is like the number one thing you could do to stick out from other people. Be professional, treat your business, your tenants like customers and like a business, and have the proper COVID things in place. And so, so Michael, I think the first time I heard you, you speak, um, it's probably going back to about eight years, seven, eight years ago or something like that, maybe eight years ago. And what struck me right away about you specifically is when you started to share the checklists, the systems that you put into place within your investing portfolio, the the investing business that you run, like your organization, Keyspire, it's the one of the fastest growing. It's the biggest, it, in my opinion, I don't get paid to say this, guys. It's the best investment group on the planet. It comes from the top, this gentleman that you see. But that Obviously, you need its own systems. You guys do massive events and all that. And I actually just learned how much is involved to put on an event like this out of your office because we're in a virtual arena at a hotel right now and you guys do this really easy. But when I saw the amount of systems and checklists you had in place to like, when you rent something out, the same paint that you use, you buy the paint once and then you use it for all your properties. Like, in all honesty, like 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 it's 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 very simple, but you took the time to do it. You ran it like a business, and you run it like a business. Yeah, yeah, it, you're absolutely right. I'm glad you recognize that early on. It's so important. That's what allows you to grow and scale and scale. You know, make, yeah. make the money you deserve. Everybody watching, and these are the things we do in Income Property Labs. Every month, you get a new success tool, and often that's a checklist that is created by our experts. It's created by our students that are doing this every day, and so you're going to get the checklist. You're going to all of that. Income Property Labs was our solution to help as many people, thousands of you, every single month with uh, with all of these pieces. And, and I wanted to mention, I mean, it's free for the next 30 days, guys. But Michael also mentioned that it's $47 a month. I bought three McDonald's combos for the team yesterday because that's what they wanted. I paid 67, I think, dollars. Like by the time somebody supersized this and supersized that, they was like 60 bucks or something silly. Like for $47 a month to get the education and really, look, I, I, t I spoke about mentors and, and, and you've not only been a mentor to me personally, but uh, from afar as well, just watching you in the organization, but to get all the, all the ways that Michael's hit his head against the wall, we don't have to anymore now because we can watch and learn and take and literally Im uh, uh, imitate what he's done and then assimilate it. And then you can start innovating it later, get it first. So even after the 30 days, guys, $47 to invest, not only in uh, uh, to get the, the know-how to invest in real estate, but to also invest in yourself. This is a no brainer. Sorry, Michael, go on my man. Yeah, no, it's, you know, I, I don't even even know how we do it for forty-seven dollars a month. I don't I know. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to pay my people and you know pay for the thing. So it's really bare minimum because we want to help as many people as possible. And we have coaching programs, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and there, you know, we can spend as much as you want, and we could customize anything for you. But this is a nice entry-level way to learn. Uh, okay, so what else can we do with multi-units in our time here? Uh, filtration is so important. Filtration is so important. And uh, Health Canada just came out with a big study about filtration. So here's my my, my tip for you guys. Buy the best HVAC filter that you can find. Whether you have a two unit home, a one unit home, especially if you have two units, a basement apartment, if you have six units, get the 3M HEPA virus filter. It's like 50 bucks. It sucks. Most landlords don't buy it. Buy that filter and let your tenants know that your their safety is important. You have the best virus filter for them and put that in. And here's the most important thing, everyone. Buy them now because they will be out of stock in October when everybody figures this out. Every landlord will have their furnace filter uh, serviced in October and November. You will not be able to buy these filters anywhere. I actually bought a case of 100 and I'm selling them for $75. And No, I'm kidding. There's another. <laughs> you had that me there. I was like, oh, okay, where, where do you get it? Okay, great. Awesome. I, I would never do that. That's like the guy that sells hand sanitizer for I a, know, a I know. Like the masks rotten. and all that. Yeah. That's rotten. But anyway, my point is buy them now. Go and buy, stock up on five or six of those, depending on how many properties you Sorry, have. Michael, what's the name of the uh, uh, of the filter again? Because I just have somebody asking in the chat here. Yeah, the, the one that, uh, that I've seen is that looks like the best is the yep. 3M. Uh, virus and I think it's a stage five. So if you okay. go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you'll see all the different stages. You could get like a three pack for five bucks, and you could spit through those right there. Like you, I could, I could 
hold it up now, you would still see my face. Or you could get the virus particle, HEPA, small micron, and those are about 50 bucks each. And uh, 3M is, is, is the leading name in these filters. But buy that now, put them in every property, let your tenants know. Here's the things that we're doing for COVID. These are the checklists that I like to put in place. Uh, and real quick, important, like, and, and really yeah. quickly, sorry, Michael, but like that's important because somebody might say, well, why do I got to do that? I have the tenant in there. Well, if the tenant's thinking of leaving, they might not because they know what you're doing. It's that extra added value yeah. that you're bringing to the tenant. Because as Michael mentioned, treat your tenants like customers, like a business would. And so when they're maybe thinking of leaving for $50 less because the next door neighbor's renting out their property, they're going to look at and think, well, man, Michael brought this for me. He fixed all the sticker. He put all the stickers down, made sure that he's protecting us and all the other tenants. It goes a long way. Buy the masks. Yeah, I bought a I bought a five pack of Hanes masks at Walmart for like twelve bucks. Buy them all masks. Say, hey, here's this is for you. I got gift card, uh, grocery gift cards. If they're having trouble right now, and you're absolutely right. If they're thinking about moving, you say, no problem. I understand. Just make sure anywhere you go has the right HEPA virus filter, has the right this, has the right that. And guess what? They're not going to have it unless they're one of the hundreds of people here today. They are yeah. not going to have that because people just generally don't think like this. Don't know. They don't think about the micro. And that's why I love yeah. you, Michael, because you bring the macro mindset, the why, the psychology. But then you go right down to the micro of having a sticker yep. of a social distancing sticker uh, yeah. on in your property. So I appreciate that. Continue. We yes. got we got a good seven, eight, nine minutes, my okay, man. So good. we can stretch this out. You're yeah, bringing so much ahead. value. And tons of messages are coming in the chat that they're going to uh, the website. Tyler, make sure that we put it back in there. Guys, don't waste any time right now. Open up another browser on this computer. Get signed up for the, the free gift. And thank you again, Michael, that you brought to all of the marathoners today. Continue. Okay, so the other thing about um, not only being good business with putting, putting all the COVID things in place that we just talked about, but also you're protecting your ass as a landlord. You're protecting your butt as an investor. What if somebody gets sick in your property? What if somebody gets sick and, and gets really injured or hurt or, you know, unfortunately dies or something and you didn't do anything to save them it's similar to fire safety um, anyone who's been to my investor summit i do a whole session on safety fire safety egress windows checklists on your fire inspection checklist on your batteries i've had two fires nobody's got hurt but the last thing i would want um not only for myself but also for the people like i don't want to hurt any, anyone to get hurt right. in my properties so I put all the fire safety and this is no different. The COVID safety is to keep people safe, is to do the right thing. And if somebody, you know, God forbid, somebody does get uh, hurt or sick in your property, um, you can show the proof that you've done everything you could as a landlord. So that's super important. When you think about not only making money, but mitigating risk, this is one of the ways you mitigate your risk by doing the right thing. Okay, we have uh, defined outdoor spaces. So in multi-units, Often there's not defined outdoor spaces. It's kind of, you just share a space, whether it's a two unit or three unit home or a six plex or a 12 plex. Think about your, and this isn't always possible, but think of if you can define outdoor spaces because mm -hmm. people, especially during the warmer months, um, people are not congregating inside, they're congregating outside. You know, all this has to do, let's go high level now, Jazz, like you said, yes. all this has to do with following people's behavior patterns and just aligning your business to what the patterns that people already have. You're not creating anything new. You're not inventing anything. You're just observing how people behave and you are just providing what people need. You're getting in between the behavior and the result. That's all you're, you're reverse doing. engineering it. Yeah. So if people wear masks, get the masks. You're not <laughs> making the policy that they have to wear masks. You're just right. observing and you're providing a part of your service. You're not telling people they have to go outside, but you've probably observed that people would rather be outside on a patio than inside a restaurant. And, you know, where I live, they're putting all the parking lots or patios. Yeah. So make an outdoor space in your unit. Um, another one I have that we've got from our students is CMHC is really far behind on multiplex approvals. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking, uh, give it at least six to eight weeks extra for the financing of the CMHC to be complete. So what's happening is speed strategies are not um, great strategies right now. Things are taking longer. Financing is taking longer. CMHC approvals are taking longer. Uh, showings for you guys are probably taking longer on the, yes. you know, on the, on the realty and broker side. Definitely. So it's just a little bit longer, right? So you just gotta have a little bit more patience right now. Let like even you mentioned financing and we have Mr. Callum Ross coming on after. Um, you can tell the approve the pre-approval process is taking longer, and let alone the actual full approval process. Yeah, yeah, every yeah, everything is taking longer. So just be aware of it. Uh, number one, be patient and kind with people. I see permits are taking longer. I hear in there. 
patient and kind with people, but also build it into your business model. Because I have some strategies that are speed is of the essence. If you you got to be in first, and if you're not in first, you're not going to get it. Well, those don't work as well today. So just build this the the lack of speed into your business model. Um, okay, number four and five. I see someone asking for five. Four is people are looking for more space. So when you um, are advertising your space for rent, have a purpose built work and live space. So try to create a little niche or a little corner, a little alcove that is the workspace. Buy office furniture, which is also really behind in ordering. So buy it now. Um, Tenants and buyers are usually looking for one more bedroom so that they can work from home. So if you're buying pre-construction or you're going condos, splurge for that bigger unit, right? A little bit more money, buy the bigger unit with the den or with the extra bedroom or wait for that bigger right. unit. And you know, you're talking to the experts in Canada and the world from what I've seen on pre-construction and on um and on buying the condo spaces and making sure they work. So Jazz and Simeon can help you with that. But my advice and what we've heard from our students is buy that extra space. Um Larger homes, people like larger homes, larger homes, more outdoor space, defined outdoor space. Um, and so those are, those are, that's what people want. They want more space and they want the work from home spaces. Now, Michael, I, I, I want to take it really back high level for a second as well. I, I spoke about the why in, uh, earlier on. Um, why did you start to invest into real estate? Like, at the, like in the, for, for, for the hundreds of people that are on this right now that have not heard from you, because in the real estate world, they maybe have been living under a rock, haven't heard of your organization, Keyspire, haven't heard of you. What made you, like, why real estate for you, Michael? Oh, my goodness. That's a good question. Well, let's, let's, um, I'll answer in the short answer. It's, I was 20 years old when I started with my business partner, Scott. And uh, we're still business partners on some properties and with Keyspire. Um, to be honest, at the beginning, I was 20 years old. It was for the money. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be wealthy. I wanted to have the cars and the women and the, all that stuff. That's why I started, to be honest. I was 20 years old. That's completely changed now. And I had all that stuff. I've had the fancy cars, the boats, the vacation homes. Guess what, Jazz? I sold it all because yeah. that's not what makes you happy. That was actually more of a pain in the ass because there was maintenance so I live a maintenance-free life. You wouldn't think of it by my hair, but I like to live a maintenance-free <laughs> life. Um, I want to just do this least as possible. I don't want to fix a boat or to, to service it or have well, a like a boat and a horse, right? If anything that eats while you sleep is probably not a good investment. Exactly it. So I rent all that stuff. I still love yeah, it. I love it. Yeah. We're gonna do a boat. We'll, we'll rent, we rent the boat. We're going on the boat. We were on the boat yesterday. You know, we're gonna do that stuff. So for me, it started out to be about the money because I realized real estate is the way that people get rich. It is just the Tried and tested too throughout history. Unless you're going to be an internet mogul and win the lottery with the, you know, with a Google or a Facebook yeah. internet business, the one in a million real yeah. estate. So it started. I think it's like 95 percent of millionaires created their wealth within real estate. That's it. It's like the stat was crazy. So that's why we started. We knew that stat. Then it shifted into uh, being able to provide for my family. So it's mm. less about the money, more about my family. Today, it's about being able to impact people. This is what I know in life. And so this is how I can impact the most amount of lives. And uh, I love doing this. I'm doing it on a Saturday morning on my anniversary while I'm at the cottage with my family. You can tell how much I freaking love being part of this. With I, you. Love and, I love um, it. I love it, my man. So that's what impacting lives. Yeah. Perfect. And that's exactly what you are doing. It's more, let me, let, let me backtrack and say, that's exactly what you've already done. And I just know you want to continue to do it. Michael, can you do a recap of the five trends again, yeah. just in case somebody came Go on quick. at the end? Uh, so number one, motivated sellers. The market is full of motivated sellers now more than uh, any time in history since 2008 was the last uh redistribution of wealth. Number two, vacation rentals. Every city and vacation rentals has gone up 20, 25%. Find a way to make it more efficient. Get more heads and beds if you have vacation rentals. If not, look for off the beaten path cities and areas where people may want a vacation in this new world. Multi-units, run them like a business. Have the COVID signs. Get the masks. Get the hand sanitizer. And most importantly, get that HVAC filter today because they will be out of stock. Um, number four, people are looking for more space. So buy that bigger unit or bigger rental house when you can. Have defined outdoor spaces for people to uh, spend their time. Number five, we need to get to, but this is real quick. Expect yes. kids to be at the showings when you sell a property or when you rent it. We were doing this all summer. Kids are home all summer. Well, they're home all summer usually, but they were home before that. A lot of kids are staying home even though the schools are opening up. If parents come up to the rental property and the kids are acting up or bored or they're not acting up, but they just want to leave because they're not interested, the parents will not look at your property to get the heck out of there. So have an iPad with the kids show, have the TV with the kids show. We used to do toys, but we don't do that anymore because of COVID right now. Um, so kids will be there, anticipate that, have something for them. And number six, here's the bonus one. 
I got about 12 of these, but I can only do these. <laughs> Innovators are busy. Book everything in advance. My father-in-law is a carpenter that builds uh, high-end homes. He says everything is backed up, pressure-treated lumber, everything. The supply chains are completely disrupted. Uh, John, one of our coaches, is a trained home inspector. He said everything is backed up on the, on the material side. Um, everything is backed up, and renovators are backed up. They had two months where they didn't work, so they're catching up on jobs. So if you're going to do a job today, you should have booked it two months ago. If you're doing a job in December, book it today because okay. everything is backed up, and I'll, I'll stop there. Michael, I can't thank you enough, my man. Not only did you uh, right away say yes to uh, being on this marathon, you did it on your eight-year anniversary. Big, big shout out to your wife, the boss, as we know. Uh, tell her, please, a massive thank you from REC. Kendra, you're just a beautiful soul. I know where Michael gets uh, uh, the gets the good looks, <laughs> gets keeps that smile going. Yeah. And so I appreciate your time, my man. Thank you.